All that mess you saw earlier is gone. I've been cleaning. Uh, baby's box. And I got the kitchen chairs over here. Haven't found a place for the uh, small wires and, and uh, power inverter plugs and stuff that I have. I'll be uh, looking for that. I gotta get a coat rack because that looks disgusting in the corner. But uh, I'm getting it. Clean off the floor, swept it. Getting the place cleaned up. Looking better. A little bit. Now this is certainly good. See the blinking light? Absorption mode. Very nice. 14.6 volts. 130 watts coming in. I like where I have my new charge controller because I can see it all the time. Very nice. I'm going to start charging up some batteries. It's time to bring out the big inverter, hook it up, and start charging some of my Ryobi batteries. I've been working hard today. I've got my kitchen cabinet has become a tool rack. I've got screws and fasteners. I sure have collected a lot in the time I've been doing this, but I've got um, different size screws for different projects. I've got in the back there, I've got for the exterior, um, what am I trying to say, siding. And I've got some little tiny screws somewhere in here, or nails for um, paneling indoors and various work. A lot of these boxes are empty or mostly empty. Got all my tools up there. And down in here, I've got the electrical fasteners and things. So that's all my electrical shelf. So it's coming along, and yes, this shelf is holding up very well. It's, uh, it's very rugged, and I think I did a good enough job fastening it to the wall, ceiling, and everything else. I think it's going to be fine. So I've been really working in here hard, getting things together. And right now, as I said, I'm going to go get that power inverter and get it going. I forgot, I can't do that while the sun is shining because I would have to disconnect the charge controller first, or the solar panels from the charge controller first, then disconnect the charge controller, and then put the inverter on. So for now, because I want to catch every bit of sunlight I can, I simply took a three-way splitter, cigarette lighter splitter, which goes to my batteries here with the clip-ons. And then took my Belkin um, 50 watt inverter. I've still got the 100 watt inverter running here. And then I part, put, hooked up my Ryobi battery to be charged to that inverter. And that's working fine. The uh, extra power bank is charged so I can pull him off. He's tapped off fully. So he's going to be a good backup for, uh, for future times anyway. For... Um, I've got an extra cigarette lighter socket here, I've got a USB port, I've got the flashlight, and um, I keep that around for topping off cell phones and small battery packs and devices. I've got the um, laptop plug running over here, and from there I'm charging up another battery pack off the laptop, which is uh, USB charged, and that is another backup. You guys have seen a video review from PowerAd that I did for this a while ago. That's a 10 thousand milliamp hour battery pack which I love very much and I actually use this to top off my cell phone two and a half times in this recent uh, lack of power and then I've got my old cell phone that I use as internet right now because that's all I have for internet because I have don't have or the um, the ability to plug in the uh, DSL line yet until um, I get that big main inverter hooked up and get some electric lines in here but anyway, the computer is still saving the recent video. That's taking some time. And uh, that's plugged into the wall as I go here. Over to the, uh, all this massive cables on the floor. But I'm getting stuff topped off, and that's important. Very important. As soon as I plugged in the um, second little inverter, the watts went up. So I'm in absorption mode, and the controller is limiting the power going into the batteries and when I'm the more power I suck out the more it's allowing to come in from the solar panels so now there's just excess and lost energy so I'm starting to charge things up now use that energy solar panels are in full sunlight out there right now good sunlight today all four panels are in a bright direct sunlight Got my Benini out, I'll be hooking that up pretty soon. I was clearing a spot for that, and I'll show you that in a minute here. I'm still in absorption mode, 14.6 volts. Oh, I like it. 
14.6 volts and 132 watts coming in so it is limiting the power based on what I'm taking there's a lot more power there's 800 watts of solar out there right now that I have hooked up and I'm only taking in 130 in direct sunlight reason is the batteries are gassing right now which is good I can actually smell it so I do have to ventilate this area well right now there's a air hole right through through the wall so I've got ventilation I've got wind blowing in here but if I close it up I'll have to ventilate I've got massive amount of charging baby cat just checking it out on my second Ryobi battery bank got my power ad charger here because my computer's done for the day and I shut it down I've got my two I've got uh, oh, I pulled off the one inverter I've got the Belkin running the Ryobi charger I've got a splitter one going to my power ad charger and one going to something else my cell phone is plugged into USB port on that I've got a lot of action going on here so um, uh, just charging everything I can right now using that extra power using all the energy I can while the sun is shining finally I have today is solar power day just pure today is battery and solar day that's all I'm doing honestly running around improving things today so um, I already I connected my two sets of six volt battery banks so I've got these are my my batteries that need desulfating desperately I've got these two connected in parallel so that's a six volt battery these two are connected in parallel so that's a six volt battery I've got it connected together in between so I've essentially got one big 12 volt battery which I'm going to hook, hook up to my Bedini charger and uh, I might experiment throughout the days with uh, different combinations of wiring and see what performs best with the Bedini charger but we'll see I'm right now checking the fluids just to make sure that they're all the same level they're not precisely the same level. Some of the fluid was boiled off at um, Advanced Auto. Sorry, I know Advance Auto, not Advanced. Anyway, I just want to make sure they're all the same to start out with. Putting in pure distilled water to make sure that they're all at the exact same level. Now I didn't touch these after they came back except for to measure the voltage. I did nothing else. One thing I do like is the ease of checking the fluids in these. This simple screw off top. Yeah, this one's pretty much alright. Um, that's some dirty water. They're sulfated badly. They're very badly sulfated. So um, they definitely need the Benini. Now my other batteries are gassing off right now pretty nicely. Um, we're down to 13.3 volts, so 69 watts and dropping. The sun is already dropping and it's only 2 p.m and I'm losing power. So now first of all I'm going to check my voltage of my new 12 volt battery and make sure am I recording? Yes, make sure that I do have a single 12 volt battery now out of all of this. I'm thinking honestly I might want to change it to be um, two 12s for better results 12.35 volts but I've never tried it in this type of a hookup before with the Bedini motor so I'm curious what will happen when I when I connect it as a single large 12 volt battery so I'm hooking up the output first um, there is the one and there is the positive those are tight. Now I'm connecting the Bedini motor. 
Okay, now I've got here the, uh, I hope that'll fit on there. Ah, that's why I never use that one. Bummer. Um, that's a bummer. That one would work, but it's too short. I've got, yeah, that won't work. All right, I've got to look for different wires to plug into there. It's a perfect idea, but... All right, I'll be back. I'm looking for some wires to plug in the um, the uh, power to the Bedini motor. I have a wire that came with the Harbor Freight solar panel set. I hope it's long enough to reach. It's going to be tight. Now the power to the Bedini motor doesn't have to be too, doesn't need really thick wires. It's just a matter of a few milliamps to keep this thing running. It's not much at all. Now if I can get this to connect, plus minus, plus minus. I hope the minus will reach. It's a long reach to get there. Yeah, I can get it. Just get it on. Uh, tight fit. Okay, I've got power to the Bedini motor. Now I want to check before I spin it up or anything. Check the voltage of the battery bank here. I know I just checked it a minute ago. 12.34 volts. Let me see if I can get that jammed in there. Okay, give this a spin up. See if the old thing will run after all this time. I was having trouble with a short in here somewhere, so I'm not sure. I never did find it. It's not, it's not firing up. Yeah, I'm not getting it to fire. The old thing has a short. Alright, I'm going to mess with the wiring on this and try to get it running. Because somewhere around here I've got a broken connection somewhere. Because it's not catching. You'd hear it kick in if it catches. Well, anyway, I'm going to try to charge up those uh, sulfated batteries with the Bedini motor. Bedini motor is running. We can see the dust in here. I just walked through with the dust coming off my clothes. The sun is shining brightly in here. It's uh, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, 85 degrees in, 42 out, and I've got no heat going. Bedini is running happily. There is a, uh, I said short, it's a loose wire. Well, it could have been a short. I don't know. I wiggled one wire, I moved it, and that started working. So it's running. So I'm desulfating this battery bank. That's going to take a long time because that's a lot of power. This is a very old, weak machine. It was the first one I ever made. And uh, it's going to take a very, very long time to uh, 
desulfate this battery bank. But I can let this run day and night. Just let it run. Now there's a, you probably can't see it, but there's a tiny little, uh, it's called a grain of wheat light bulb right here. And I have a variable resistor. As it starts to glow brighter, I adjust it. I want that to just barely be visible. And that's how you adjust the performance of this. Well, there it is. Let it sit. Let it run. The long process of restoration has begun. Boy, look at that dust. Wow. Alright, well, there's power in a tiny home. <laughs>